Well, yeah, how's it going today? Good day to you. So today we're kicking the camera again, my favorite off-air trick. And we're working on the bottom of the SB600 here. This is um, where the dual conversion crystal oscillator lives. And there's a little can there. You just uh, take these four screws loose and carefully slide this off. Now a little sting in the tail will be this little, there's a little phenolic spacer and it might want to fall off. It sits in there this way, it just spaces, helps space the can, probably keeps it from vibrating, becoming microphonic and throwing the thing around. You can take it out or you could uh, leave it in. I'm just going to take it out just to keep all the parts together and try and not cause too much trouble. So what we're looking at here is <coughs> we're merely recapping this and we're kind of cutting in line here. This isn't necessarily the best way to do this but it is a way to do this and it's how I've chosen to do this. So I'm recapping the thing with um, let's back up a little bit so you're, you're after these little molded paper caps. These are uh, kind of typically called the Black Beauty. And that might be the brand name. I'm not sure. Um, these are all in here. There's two values. There's, I think it's 0.22 and then 0.01. And I've chosen to replace all of these with the 0.1 capacitors. You're just, you're just trying to bypass these things to ground. It's not super critical. There's only a few places in here that these are in a coupling type circuit and that's in the audio section. So we're, we're just going to do this and this is a basic way of doing this. So you spot your culprit which is like this one up here. And what I do is I lop the leads off as close to the canister of the cap as I can. So this one's a pretty long one. It's going to be a little tough to see. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit and how much trouble we can get into. So it's, it's right here. So we're going to cut this as close to the body on this side with the side cutters. And then you just kind of swing this out of the way. And then on the back, we're going to do the same thing. Now this one is connected here, which we just clipped off. And then it goes to this tube, to the pin on this tube. So we kind of want to be careful. We don't want to break this, um, this socket. We want to be a little careful. You can bend these a little bit, but not too much. Okay. So here's the method I've chose to do this. So there's a couple three ways you can do this. You could clip the old wires and then just kind of, uh, you know, kind of uh, hook them together and splice them together. You can totally clear the wire out and try and rewrap it all. Um, that's how I would like to do this, but it's a lot of work. This is kind of a third method. I can't remember where I ever seen this. There's a variation of this. It was a repair variation years and years ago. So what you do is you take a small drill bit, or this is a little pin vise, and this is a number um, like 60 drill. It's a pretty damn small drill. And you're gonna make a little, you're gonna wind a little coil on the end of that. Let's back this out so this isn't so hard to see. And so you kind of get in here and measure this distance and then you wind this coil around here which is going to be really hard to see and you try and do it neatly and so you're basically making what looks like a little baby spring on there you might need some pliers some flat blade pliers Basically, you're making a little spring that's the size of the diameter of this wire that you clipped loose from that capacitor. So here it is, kind of before I formed it up and started tightening it up. So you kind of crush that down and keep slowly tightening it up. And eventually you make this little spring here. I don't know if you can see this super well. And then you can use the mandrel to bend it sideways. 
and you're going from kind of point A to point B here. So idealistically, this slips over the wire that you've trimmed up. And you do the same thing to the other side, and you've kind of measured that. This all sounds a little weird, but I'll show this to you. Years ago, they made these little, they were little baby springs, and you just trimmed the components' leads to the right length and slid a spring over each end. Well, you could do that too if you had enough uh, bus wire, and that may not be a bad way to do it. The bad thing about this way is you lose a lot of the length of this, and there are some places in here you need all the length you can get your hot little hands on. So going to bend this so we've got the uh, we've got the yeah, I'm trying to look in the camera lens here there it is so we've got the little the little leads there and you just slide your old wire over this like this and then you solder it and it's not terribly hard Okay. So you might have to dink around to get this to all line up, and you might have, if you're lucky, you'll have to shorten some of the old wire or fool around to get this all lined back up. And it, it's a pretty decent way to do this. It's not my favorite way. And sometimes you have to trim the old wire a little bit. This can be a real pain. Like this one's got a piece of insulation over it. And we're just going to trim that. It's a pretty good way. It makes a pretty good connection, especially if you... Um, if you get that that diameter down, it's not too bad. Now these caps are 0.1 at a thousand volts, so they're rated plenty high. So we kind of just monkey around in here, and of course you can't see this because my hands are in the way. Anyway, so there we go. That might be my man right there. I'm waiting for a package today. So right here is where that little coil is, and then down here. So we just take the soldering iron and you just hit that coil, and you you watch that for it to kind of solder and sweat into that connection. The other thing you can do is you can hit the old wire while you're heating the coil and it'll wick right in there. When you do it right, it'll just flow right in there and it'll look like a million dollars. The other thing you want to do too is before you, uh, yeah, it's a little, some smoke may be required. Before you close this all up, you want to give this a good tug with your fingernail and make sure it's all there. So there we go. So that's all I was really trying to show you there is kind of this technique. There's, you know, two or three different techniques. This is, I don't know, one of the, uh, I'm going to use the word more sensible ones. And you just keep rubber stamping that. These caps aren't polarized in any way, shape, or form. The old ones were polarized, but that you don't have to worry about that anymore. So there you go. Anyway, um, we got the local conversion oscillator done. And you just keep rubber stamping along the way and doing your thing. Um, I did measure the leakage on these caps, and they are there. It's not pretty. So anyway, take her easy. Have a groovy day, and we'll talk to you later.